very good morning student uh, today's topic is uh, program and uh, network uh, properties so the table of contents are like this so in this video lecture we'll see the conditions of uh, parallelism then we'll see the problem of partitioning and uh, scheduling then uh, the program flow mechanisms then uh, system interconnect architectures so in this uh, video lecture we'll see the conditions of uh, parallelisms so first we'll see the data dependency so the ordering relationship between the statements is indicated by the data dependency so there are five types of uh, data dependency as shown below so the first one is uh, the flow dependency <coughs> uh, statement called S2 is a flow dependent on our statement S1 if an execution path exists from S1 to S2 and if at least one output of S1 feeds in as a input to S2 then it is a flow dependency and it is indicated or denoted by the S1 arrow mark S2 so this shows the flow dependency that is uh, the statement s2 is a flow dependency on a statement s1 so we'll see later the examples how the flow dependency is uh, shown with the examples so next one is the anti-dependence so this uh, anti-dependence uh, can be defined as if suppose the statement s2 is an uh, anti-dependent on a statement s1 if s2 follows s1 in program order and if the output of s2 overlaps with the input of s1 then it is anti-dependent and a direct arrow crossed with a bar as in s1 to s2 it uh, indicates the anti-dependent from s1 to s2 as you can see in this figure the next one is the output dependence uh, two states uh, two statements are output dependent if they produce the same output variables then those two statements are the output dependence because they produce the same output so hence the s1 and s2 are called as the output dependence then comes the input output dependence so the read and write operations are the IO statements. So the IO dependence occurs not because the same variables are involved, but because the same file is referred by both IO statements, like uh, uh, the read and write statements refers the same file. So then those dependency is called as a input output dependency. Then the last one is the unknown dependence. So the dependence relationship between the two statements S1 and S2 cannot be determined in the following situation. If the uh, subscript of an, a variable as itself subscribed, that is indirect addressing, then it will be an unknown dependency. Then the subscript does not contain the loop index variable then it is a unknown dependence and a variable appears more than once with the subscripts having a different coefficients of the loop variable then the fourth statement that is the subscript is non-linear in the loop index variable then with these conditions so the dependency is called as the unknown dependency now we will try to understand the dependency with the example so that is a data dependency in a program so consider the following code uh, fragment of a four instruction so statement one so what it indicates load r1 comma a so we are loading the uh, content of a so a indicates here memory so we are going to load the content of memory onto the register r1 so whatever the data is stored into this memory location 
so that data is moved into the register r1 so this is what the statement one then statement two add r2 comma r1 so this uh, uh, assembly level language statement so performs the addition of r1 and r2 so perform the addition of r1 and r2 and store the result into the r2 here this is statement 2 then statement 3 so we are moving the content of r3 into the r1 then uh, statement 4 so we are storing we are storing the r1 value onto the memory location here okay so b is in a memory location so whatever the value is stored uh, into the r1 is moved or stored onto the memory location called b here so in this uh, uh, statements as you can see statement 1 statement 2 statement 3 and uh, statement 4 so s2 so yeah so s2 is a flow dependent on s1 right so s2 is a flow dependent on s1 because the variable a <coughs> or the memory location a is passed via the register r1 so hence s2 is a what the flow dependent on s1 and an s3 is anti dependent on s2 s3 is anti dependent on s2 because of uh, the potential conflicts in a register contained in r1 right as you can see so r1 register is used here as well as the r1 registers are used so hence s3 is anti dependent on the s2 here right and the statements s1 and s4 are independent so they are not dependent on any of the statements right so those statements are called as a what the independent statements now you can see the diagram that is a dependence uh, graph so we can plot the graph as the s2 so this s2 is the flow dependent on s1 and s3 is the anti dependent on s2 right so this is the flow dependency and this is the anti dependency statement so which is indicated with this type of an arrow here and the s1 and the s4 are independent so they are not dependent on the other statements so they can be executed uh, independently so hence so those statements are called as what the independent statements because they are not dependent on the other statements here next we will consider a code fragment involving the input output dependency so in the previous example we have seen the flow dependency and anti dependent statements so in this example we will see the uh, input output operations here so as shown in this figure so s3 is input output and dependent on s1 right so how so s1 statement is what uh, we are going to read array a so this is array a from the unit 4 so we are going to read the a of a fourth element get more point so we are going to read the a of fourth element then s2 statement uh, rewind the uh, content of a of 4 then s3 is write uh, array b onto the tape unit 4 here so b of 4 then rewind so <coughs> so here the statement s3 okay so we are going to write the value of uh, array of b into the tape unit 4 so the read write statements s1 and s3 are io dependent on each other because they both assess the same file okay. so they assess the same file so
so the above uh, the data dependency relationship should not be uh, violated during the program executions so these two statements which are io dependency so which uh, uses the same file so which is indicated in this uh, diagram here why they are input output dependency because we are reading and writing the operation uh, with the only one file so both uses the same file so hence to execute these two instructions we require the file and both are dependent each others now coming to the uh, control dependency so this uh, refers the situation where the order of execution of our statements cannot be determined before the runtime for example if statements so these statements is a situation where the order of execution of statements cannot be determined right? it, it all depend upon the the conditions what conditions we are putting into the if conditions right so in this type of uh, uh, conditional statements it can take the different path after a conditional branch may introduce or eliminate the data dependency among the instructions dependence may also exist between operations performed in successive iterations of a looping procedures so here we can uh, we can see one example so this uh, the first example uh, shows the successive iterations of the following loop are control independent so these are what the control independent statements how we'll see so uh, in this uh, uh, example we have used a conditional statement that is if okay so i am going to assign i is equal to 1 here so one value is assigned to i value okay and then a of i that is a of 1 is equal to c of 1 if a of 1 less than 0 okay then what we are doing we are performing a of i is equal to 1 so this of conditional statement which is of a control independent then the second example we can see that so these statements are the control dependent iterations how we will see if i is equal to 1 okay then if a of i minus 1 so that is 1 minus 1 then it will become as a a of 0 equal to 0 okay i am checking the conditions here so a i i minus 1 that is a of 0 equal to 0 then i am performing a of i is equal to 0 so which is control dependent iterations right so it depends upon the value of i then a of 0 right so in the first example we can see this is the successive iterations right so the value or, or the index will not change here so it remains the constant but here the index is changed like a of i in first example we have seen i is equal to 1 but here the index is changed to 0 here right so hence we can see it has what the control dependent iterations right and control dependency often uh, prohibits the parallelism from being exploited so the compiler techniques for hardware branch predictions techniques are needed to get around the control dependency in order to exploit more parallelism here now going to the resource dependence so this is different from the data or control dependence 
so which demands the independent of the work to be done here so resource dependency is concerned with the conflicts in using the shared resources if uh, the two statements which are shared the resources then it will become as a what the resource dependence so such as integer units floating point uh, units registers or memory areas uh, among the parallel events right so if the conflicts involved in these storage we call it as a storage dependence then the conflicts can be occurred in arithmetic logical unit so we will call it as a what the alu dependence in case of uh, storage dependence each task must work on independent storage locations or to use the protected access right the detection of parallelism in pro programs requires a check of the various dependency relations here now going to the bunstein's conditions so what is this uh, bunstein conditions in the year 1966 bunstein revealed a set of uh, conditions based on which the two processes can execute in parallel a process is a software entity corresponding to the abstraction of the program and uh, here we define the input set i of a process p as a set of all input variables needed to execute the process so i indicates input p indicates the process as a set of all the input variables which are needed to execute the process here similarly the output set o consisting of all output variables generated after execution of the process p now consider the two processes p1 and p2 with their input i1 and i2 and the output o1 and o2 respectively these two processes can execute in parallel and which is denoted denoted by p1 parallel to p2 right so here we are considering the two processes so which are executing parallelly here so hence we can indicate the two processes with this symbol here p1 parallel p2 uh, if they are independent and therefore create a deterministic results here so formally these conditions are stated as follows with this symbol i inputs and o indicates outputs so these three conditions are known as bunstein's condition the input set i is also called the read set then similarly the output set o has been called the write set okay so i is the input set and o is the right set the and the range of a process p so in terms of uh, data dependencies the bunstein condition simply uh, imply that two processes can execute in parallel if they are flow independent anti independent and output independent here and the parallel execution of uh, such two processes Uh, produces the same results regardless of whatever the they they execute sequentially in any order or in parallel here so this is because the output of one process uh, will not be used as a input to the other process okay now we we'll consider an example so in this example uh, we are going to determine the parallelism embedded in the following statements and we are going to draw the dependency graphs here okay so in this example the process p1 which performs the multiplication between d and d and stores the result into the c here so c is equal to d into e then process 2 performs addition between g plus c and the value is stored into what em here then p3 b plus c then on to the a Uh, L plus n that is a process of four, then stored into value, then five C plus C and value stored into the 
f here. Now we'll see the data dependency graph. Okay. So as in this figure, we can see this is the data dependency graph. Okay, showing both data dependency and as well as the resource dependency. So data dependency, which are shown as the solid arrows. Okay, then the resource dependency, which is showed as the uh, dashed arrows. My dear, I apologize for you people for the poor quality of the image. Okay, so here I'll indicate the dotted lines here. Kindly excuse the image quality of this uh, presentation. So these all what the dotted lines indicates the resource dependency and the solid lines. And this is solid line uh, shows the data dependency here. Okay. So for example, if I consider P2, right? So P2 is only the flow dependency onto the process P1. How? Because if I want to calculate the value of M, I am performing the addition between G plus C, right? So to get the value of C, so first the process 1 should be executed here. Hence, a P2 is a flow dependent on P1 here. What's my point? Then P2 and P3, so P3 is a flow dependency on a P1. Why? Because P3 consisting of the statements like A is equal to B plus C. Right? So to get the C value, so first process 1 has to be executed here. Right? Then only I can uh, get the value of A. Because A is equal to B plus C. And process 1 that is C is equal to D into E. Then performing the multiplication between D and E, I'll get the value of C here, right? So that value is uh, used in into the uh, process 3 here. So hence process 3 is a flow dependency on P1 here. It is a flow dependence. Okay. Then process 4. Process 4. So what kind of a dependency it is? It is a dependency of output dependency here. Right. So, P4 consisting of the statement C is equal to L plus M. Right? C is a part of what? P1. What's the point? Right? So, hence, to get the output of C, so P4 is the output dependency on P1 here. Right? So, this is what? The output dependency that is 4 is the output dependency on P1 here. If I consider P5, can you identify any dependency on uh, P1, P2, P3, P4? No, right? P5 is independent. So G plus E. So G not dependent. E is not dependent on any process. So hence it is a independent process here right and uh, dotted lines which indicates the resource dependency here p4 is a resource dependency on uh, p2 right because m which is uh, used in a p4 statement right so to get the m value so we need to depend or process 4 uh, need to depend on the process 2 which is of a resources because the resource is shared from the process 2 to the process 4 here. Alright. So this is what the data dependency graph showing the both uh, data dependency and resource dependency here. Now we'll see execution of uh, these statements. Okay. So two types one uh, these statements can be executed sequentially one by one then they can be executed parallel parallelly right so so this b figure which shows the sequential execution in five steps right so it consisting of five processes here p1 uh, to p5 right then they can be executed sequentially assuming one step per statement here no pipeline so here no pipeline 
that means there is no parallelism involved in the first execution and the second one so this is what are the parallel execution here okay so we'll see that is uh, first process one is, is executed so to execute the process one we require what uh, d value and e value so those values are supplied here so d value and e value is supplied to the process one then what is the output i'll get the c as the output here so that will be the input to the process two right because m is equal to g plus c as you can see here m is equal to g plus c all right then uh, to execute the process two that is m is equal to g plus c so we require the output of p1 that is c and the value of g then i'll get the output of m that is m value so that will be supplied to what again to the process 4 so process 4 c is equal to l plus m so here you can see here so m so which is dependent on the process 2 the resource dependence this is called what the resource dependence on uh, p2 here all right then p3 so p3 that is uh, a is equal to b plus c then uh, b value is uh, supplied and the c value that is uh, the from the process one so c value it gets okay so sequentially in this example uh, each statements are executed one after the other so hence it is a sequential execution here then in the second uh, diagram so this is parallel execution here okay so this is one process i'll take and this is another process okay because p1 p2 p3 p4 are dependents in uh, in one another way so they may be the data dependency or the resource dependency as we have seen in uh, last example so p1 p2 p3 p4 this all what the they are dependents among each other so hence uh, we will take uh, those processes and uh, those processes will be executed in one cycle and another process that is p5 which is independent so it will be executed with another uh, execution steps here right so here you can see here p1 so by supplying the value of d and e i'll get a c right and uh, so this c is uh, dependent on uh, uh, or p3 and p2 are dependent on uh, the c value okay and uh, p4 which is dependent on the p2 here right so p2 p3 p4 they are dependent on uh, the on another and uh, these four processes are executed in one step and the another process that is a p5 so that is which is which is independent of the remaining process so it will be executed a separate layer okay thank you thank you for watching this video